Well, since Stuart's not here, I guess Sapphire the Cat is going to be taking his place with me. This is uh, especially loves the boys and one of Stuart's favorite friends, Sapphire, our snowshoe Siamese, who's like a little boy. So let's move him out of the spot, or at least put him behind me. Let's see what happens. There he goes. All right. Always fun to see part of the Swerdlow household because, it, trust me, it never ends. Those in body, those in, without a body, we're all here. Oh, stop, stop. Now he's scratching. He's mad because I took his chair. Anyway, um, there goes my clock. Did you share the music with me? All right. So, I'm off and running. This is Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow for Expansions.com. Here we are in the week of August 20th, again, with all kinds of exciting news to share with you. Stuart, as you know, is on the road, so I'm filling in for both of us, which is a big job. And it's too bad because I have such good Stuart stories here that um, he would have so much fun with these. And, of course, help me with some of my pronunciations in foreign languages, which I'm not quite as good at as he is. But we will get through it because really good stuff going on in the world this week. Fascinating, interesting. This is a world, remember, that you personally chose to live in. So with that, I'm going to start right off the top with some Obama news for you. A lot of interesting things um, being said about the president these days as we gear up closer to the election. We have Democratic Governor Pat Quinn, who arrived at the Illinois State Fair in Springfield, Illinois on Governor's Day, and he made what the Chicago Sun-Times is calling the mother of all guffaws. The governor said, I think, quote, this is quote, I think everybody knows that Obama, uh, he's gone, he's dead, and the American auto industry is alive and well, thanks to our president. This is, unquote, this is what they say. And a few minutes later, the president admitted that he meant to refer to Osama bin Laden and that he goofed up. To me, that's funny because you or odd is a better word. Usually nothing goes out in the media unless it's planned, no matter how it is, no matter how many times they cover up for it, there's a reason why it was said. And again, I go back, I never heard of the name Obama, I never heard of the name Osama, and then all of a sudden we have two. So to me, right there, that's a clue about what's going on in your world. Now, following that, we have a recent show in Singapore with Megadeth's uh, 13 World Tour. And Mustang took to the mic from the stage to discuss his beliefs about some of the recent gun violence in America. And he says, quote, back in my country, my president, and then he pretends to gag himself with his finger, continues, quote, is trying to pass a gun ban, so he's staging all of these murders. The fast and furious thing down at that border, and Aurora, Colorado, all the people that were killed there, and now the beautiful people at the Sikh temple, unquote. Oh, then he went, goes on to say again, quote, I don't know where I'm going to live if America keeps going the way it's going, because it looks like it's turning into Nazi America. So there we have the word Nazi again, unquote, and again, running down the president. And that was followed by singer Hank Williams Jr. comment at the Iowa State Fair. So apparently this is all in the heartland in the Midwest here. His comments were reported by Des Moines Register reporter Joe Lawler, and according to Lawler, uh, Williams said, quote, we've got a Muslim president who hates farming, hates the military, hates the U.S., and we hate him, unquote. And the comments were apparently met with applause and loud cheers. Now, also, this wasn't the first time that Fox has said things about the president. Apparently, uh, he was show, he was appeared on a Fox and Friends uh, show to talk politics via a satellite hookup. And he said right away that John Boner's golf game with Barack Obama was a major mistake. Quote, that would be like Hitler playing golf with Netanyahu, not hardly in the shape this country is in. Unquote. Uh, so when the host didn't understand the analogy, Williams continued, quote, I'm glad you don't, brother, because a lot of people do. They're the enemy, Obama and Biden. Are you kidding? The three stooges. Unquote. And then when they were asked about that the president and vice president were only two people, Williams just continued talking. 
without addressing that question. So there's all kinds of clues that are going on here. These are not just random statements or comments or quotes. There is a reason that this is out there. And again, remember what I told you, we continue to look for trends because eventually what they're trying to tell us in their own symbolic way is going to get through to us and eventually we'll get it. Going further, most of you are probably familiar by now about the comments made by Missouri Congressman Todd Aiken, who's a conservative Republican candidate for the U.S. Senate, about his comments about a legitimate rape, wherein he discussed how that, um, well, let's just quote him here. It says, it seems to me, first of all, from what I understand from doctors, that's really rare. If it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to shut the whole thing down. Unquote. And this is about the rape victim's chance of becoming pregnant. Now, again, a legitimate rape is the term that's being splayed all across the world at this point. So, what is a legitimate rape? I've never heard that term before so vehemently expressed publicly. Uh, of course, as we all know, there is no such thing. But why is that being put out there? And again, I'm going to take you back. I don't care how many times I've said it, I'll say it again. New World Religion, you're going to find a lot of sexual things going on that at one time you would have considered not appropriate at some point. It will be publicly acceptable. So then, of course, he comes back and apologizes. Um, and quote, in reviewing my off-the-cuff remarks, it's clear that I misspoke in this interview and it does not reflect the deep empathy I hold for the thousands of women who are raped and abused every year. Of course, um, he is still holding, um, he's not holding the lead, but he's like neck and neck with his uh, opposer, I guess you would call it. So it's not really affecting him out there as far as what they're showing in the polls. And of course, who runs the polls? Well, whoever can push the correct buttons and do the reporting. So, that's my Obama news. Well, part of it. I've got some more stuff later on, but it's, I kind of try and put it in categories for you so you can follow it, hopefully, and start, start to see the trends. Now, many of you also may have seen the newest, one of the newest um, pictures that's being plastered, I know, all over my Facebook page. I don't know if you've seen this, but it's the anti-suicide nasal spray. Again, who ever heard of such thing? The military suicide rate doubled in July. That's one of our troops almost every day killing him or herself. Now, again, this doubled in July. Now they're bringing this forward. It says, to come up with an answer, the Army recently gave $3 million to a University of Indiana Research Center. What I want to know is how recently. The suicide rate just doubled in July, and now, lo and behold, they are putting forward the anti-suicide nasal spray. Um, the report says that researchers found a naturally occurring neurochemical called thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH, that has euphoric, calming, antidepressant effects. Now, again, this is interesting because it says, news of the nasal spray comes as a relief to some who had to endure spinal taps for injections of the medicine. I don't get how we segue from this particular anti-suicide nasal spray that some people had to endure spinal taps. Okay, I have never heard of this before. Perhaps you have. I'm sure you'll let me know if you have. So, however this medicine was delivered before to whoever was suicidal, I guess, or were these test subjects, I don't know. It said they had to go for spinal taps, but now, lo and behold, they can do it by a nasal spray. So now they are injecting, it looks like from what I can tell from the pictures, they're doing all the troops. Tell me if I've read this wrong or you have other information, but it looks like all the troops now are getting this injection. Of course, God knows what's in the nasal spray and where is it going? Right up into your brain, right up into the pineal, pineal gland, right into your endocrine system. It doesn't make sense to me. The Pentagon, which tracks military suicides, reported that troops have committed the act at 18% increase over the same period last year. Something's very wrong here. Now it, the article tells us that more troops die by their own hands than by the hands of the Taliban in Afghanistan. 
Okay, the spray is possible because of advances in nanotechnology delivery systems. Now this is the good news for you, so hold on to your hats because researchers plan to run a full battery of trials over the next few years, probably on our military people who are getting the spray, and hopefully put the spray not only in the hands of the soldiers but civilians as well. So yes, you too can have a nasal spray and have your own happy pill shot right up into your head. A legal drug that will give you the same effects as many illegal drugs that many of you are probably well familiar with. The scientists say that applications go beyond antidepressant medications. Of course, they're also shutting down your pituitary and God knows what else in your brain. So think about things and use your tools of discernment as best as you can. And of course, we know the military people really have no choice but to be experimented on. So if you are in the military, keep yourself inviolate at all times. Permeate and flood each and all each and all of your cells because that will help to mitigate some of the damage and sea salt baths will help to pull it out. Far infrared saunas will help you. And of course, if you're doing a lot of sweating, if you're in the desert or whatever, that will help you. But it's all a function of mind pattern, what happens when, where this goes and how it affects you. So pay attention. Okay, physical face clone, moving right along. Scientists employed by Walt Disney Company has developed new technology, they say, that allows them to replicate with near-perfect accuracy the human face. Now, this was posted on the Disney Research website, apparently, um, that scientists and researchers based in a lab in Zurich were motivated by the idea of translating the company's ability to create virtual world into real worlds. So their aim is to create physical robot characters that move and look like real humans. Again, if they're telling you this, they already have it. These are going to be called animatronics characters. So keep that in mind. And a lot of you have reported these kind of incidences to us. Um, you're not sure if these are robots or real people, especially when we think about such things as the men in black. So these already exist, uh, animatronics but now they're telling you. So, again, be mindful. Back to the Nazis, because those aren't going away, and again, this is where I need some of Stuart's help, because I'm not sure how to pronounce the name of the book, but we will post it for you along with the, the podcast. There was a librarian who was raised in Germany, who works at a library just outside of Chicago that said, quote, people drop off books all the time. If there's one that's in German, it goes to my desk. I didn't realize what it was until I, until I started to look through it, unquote. It turned out to be a rare Nazi artifact titled 1938 to 1941, that much I can say. Wehr, and then it's J-A-H-R-E, and then Hermann Göring Werke. The book describes a four-year Nazi economic plan for a steel-producing industrial site in the town of Salzgitter, Germany during World War II. According to the library, the book was given to workers at the steel mill as a Christmas gift. So how it wound up in Chicago, Illinois, I don't know, but again, um, we want to keep this word Nazi to the forefront. It's another excuse. and. That segues into the next article. You might have seen the golf statue of Adolf Hitler by artists Jake and Dinos Chapman in the UK. It says that the duo created a likeness of the Fuhrer in the shape of a golf ornament, which has been deemed tasteless, surprise, surprise, by a member of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. According to BBC News, the British Jews organization claims that the Hitler statue, which raises its arm in a fascist salute and shouts 999 when a ball passes through it, quote, has absolutely no artistic value whatsoever. Well, of course it does. The artistic value is to keep the Nazi regime, regime in front of the public. That's its purpose. So lots of Nazi stuff going on. Um, now here's the, the other... Uh, 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 Obama article I wanted to mention to you um, that says that he is planning to announce that the Department of Agriculture intends to buy up 170 million dollars worth of pork, lamb, chicken, and catfish to help support farmers suffering from the drought. Now, so according to the article, it says the purchases will go toward food nutrition assistance programs like food banks 
and uh, let's see, it will direct the Department of, De of Defense to encourage its vendors to speed up the purchases and freeze it for later use. Now, what I want to know is what kind of food is in food banks? Do you get this kind of food in food banks? Because I know whenever they show them on television, they usually show, show canned goods. So if you've ever used a food bank, know about food banks, let me know if they actually give meat, unless they plan on canning the meat. I don't know. My guess is, is that it's an excuse to purchase it for their own use. Perhaps it's for the military, perhaps it's for their secret underground bases. But at the end of the, well, it starts out this way because it tells you one thing, it does something else. In the middle of the article, it says, this is win-win. Farmers and ranchers have an opportunity to sell more of their products at this critical time and taxpayers will get a better price on food that would have been purchased later. Okay. Then at the end of the article, it says the U.S. drought will drive up food prices. Well, this is why. They're pulling out $170 million worth of meat out of the economy. So what's going to happen to the meat that's there? Prices will go up. So on the one hand, in the same article, they're telling you it's a win-win. Taxpayers will get a better price on food. And then at the end, it says U.S. drought will drive up food prices. So pay attention to what they're telling you. Okay, and I've also been telling you recently about all the secret behind the scenes things that they're telling you about, which is really silly because they're saying this secret thing and this secret thing. I told you, I listed them the last few um, podcasts. I'm not going to list them again for you, but another secret thing. We have a secret war. And the article says more secret bases. That's how it starts out. More and better unmanned warplanes. More frequent and deadly robotic attacks. Like we're supposed to be proud of all of this. But the bottom line is that here we have, um, it says the shadowy American-led drone campaign in the Horn of Africa that targets Islamic militants more ruthlessly than ever. And again, they're talking about the scope and scale of the secret African drone war. Uh, to me, again, more experimentation. There are people down there, obviously, that don't have the means to complain and to report what they see. So what a better place to test them. It says, in an escalating secret war, drones are doing an ever greater proportion of the American fighting. So secret, secret, secret. They're telling you they have a lot of secrets, and some of them they're telling you about but not in ways that really make sense. It's just one thing you're going to read and pass off unless you keep your eyes and your ears open. Now, last podcast, I talked to you about intersex and um, Intersex Society of America specifically. I showed you our book, The True Reality of Sexuality. Stuart and I wrote about this first many years ago. But interestingly enough, there is an article that if you go to the link, the link's address is Intersex Babies. But the article, <clears throat> it's, a long, it's a lengthy article, so unless I've missed it, and if you happen to read it, you, again, you'll probably tell me. In the article itself, I see nothing mentioned about intersex babies, not that term. Although there are things that allude to that, but they do not use that term. The point of this article says what to do if you find out you're pregnant and could have a girl born with what looks like a small penis. Apparently, which I didn't know about, I'm sure the Intersex Society of America knows about this, expectant mothers in this position for the past two decades have, are able to take a drug which helps to prevent fetuses at risk at this from forming partly masculinized genitals. So apparently there was research done in Sweden that now tells you there are some long-term side effects, again, surprise, surprise, it says that doctors have prescribed the drug, which, I'll, which is dexamethasone, since the 1980s to help children at the risk of this condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which is CAH. It comes in several forms. It affects the adrenal glands, apparently, according to this anyway, can cause a severe loss of salt and water in boys and girls. In girls, it causes the clitoris to resemble a small penis or the vagina to become partly closed like a scrotum. And this was also called disorders of sex development with babies born with amb ambiguous genitalia. Okay, so it says, given all the doubts, it's a long article, you can read it for yourself if you want more details. How did the treatment gain such widespread acceptance? Apparently, there's a renowned CAH expert at Mount Sinai in New York, Maria New, N-E-W, who convinced the women and doctors of the drug's values. 
However, a group of bioethicists, um, including Alice Drager of Northwestern University, expressed concern about her work. So, of course, they had to go through all the, the you know, research and finally came up with saying, well, maybe we need to look into this further. That's the bottom line. And um, now they're saying that perhaps that she was doing de facto experimentation on fetuses and pregnant women largely outside of prospective long-term trials. Well, surprise, surprise. It says the genitals that Dex is given to modify form at the same time as the heart, the brain, and other organs. And research suggests that the drug can affect other systems as well. Again, surprise, surprise. If you have common sense, you're going to know that. It says when pregnant lab animals take this medication, their offspring may be increased risk for high blood pressure, um, high blood sugar, impaired memory and learning, abnormal responses to stress. Now, it says again, how do you weigh what having unusual genitalia might mean to a child's life against the unclear risks of early treatment? And the author of this article says, I'm not sure, but whatever fix prenatal dex may seem to promise, the risks look awfully daunting. So again, they're bringing this forward to you about intersex babies and the issues that are out there and that are being uh, looked at by the doctors, that research is being done on it, that it does happen. And again, I've been around a long time. Until Stuart and I wrote the book, True Reality of Sexuality, and did our research, I had no clue that this situation even occurred. And most of you probably don't either, unless it some way affected your life. Okay, with that said, how about genetically modified humans, GM babies? These actually have been created. This was recently revealed. Um, the disclosure says that 30 healthy babies were born after a series of experiments in the U.S. provoked another furious debate about ethics. Surprise, surprise. Again, not, these aren't surprises to people like you, but this is a surprise if you're not paying attention. It says two of the babies have been tested and have been found to contain genes from three parents. And this is what we have been talking to you about all along. When we tell you about how people are put together and the programming is done and about the human race as a product of alien experimentation, there are often many genes that comprise and come together to form one human. And this is what they are telling you, one human body, I should say. It says 15 of the children were born in the past three years as a result of one experimental program at the Institute for Reproductive Medicine and Scientist, Science of St. Barnabas in New Jersey. The babies were born to women who had problems conceiving. The extra genes would come from a female donor that were inserted into their eggs before they were fertilized. Now we have John Smeaton, National Director of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, who says, quote, one has tremendous sympathy for couples who suffer infertility problems, but this seems to be a further illustration of the fact that the whole process of in vitro fertilization as a means of conceiving babies leads to babies being regarded as objects on a, project, on a production line. It is a further and very worrying step down the wrong road for humanity." Unquote. Then on the other hand, we have a brilliant but controversial scientist named Jacques Cohen, who has pushed the boundaries of assisted reproduction technologies. He feels that this type of technology will allow infertile men to have their own children by injecting sperm DNA straight into the, leg, the egg into the lab. Prior to this, only infertile women were able to conceive. Now they're going to work toward having infertile men be able to have their own children. Um, last year, Professor Cohen said that his expertise would allow him to clone children. Surprise. Again, not to you. A prospect treated with horror by the mainstream scientific community. And he says, quote, it would be an afternoon's work for one of my students adding that he had been approached by at least three individuals, I'm sure more, wishing to create a clone child but had turned down their requests and probably not. And we're going to be reading about this some days, some years down the road when, surprise, surprise, here we have these clone children from these laboratories who are now treated like a production line. And there was a program out many years ago, probably 10 or 15 years, and some of you may have watched it. Do you remember it? There was a 
uh, clones, clones that were called nipple necks and they had little things in the back of their neck and they were used for war on other planets and they were put down by naturally conceived and born children at that time of course grown into military soldiers because these clones had no parents and they were called nipple necks so uh, see if any of you remember that show that was on for a while I think it only lasted one season but it was very telling and here's another interesting thing that slipped out of the news. A Saudi Arabian city for women only. Now the original article said that there was a gender segregation laws that because of these in the Muslim countries that there was a desire to increase employment opportunities for women. Because only about 15% of the cur current Saudi workforce is female despite that there are about 78% of female university graduates in the country are unemployed. So they were going to create a new women-only cities. However, there was a follow-up report that said, no, no, that was misunderstood, that the new city will provide employment opportunities for both men and women. However, it uh, says, quote, it's a city like any other city um, where men and women work, but there are special sections and production halls for to be reserved for women within the factories, unquote. So, you know, again, what are they doing? This is really what we're looking at, the overall thing, because this is the perfect place to do those kind of experiments because of the way that women are pulled out and segregated. Remember, in Muslim countries, they have to have a bodyguard whenever they're out on the streets. Many times they can't drive, they can't go to work. There are a lot of things that keep them in the home. So now what are they doing as far as gender separation? Perhaps it's a study on that. We don't, we don't know, but they will tell us eventually if we read the signs. Well, this is where I really, really need Stuart, um, because I'm almost to the end of my news and the stories get increasingly better or worse, depending upon your view of society. How many of you out there know that anal tattoos are the next big thing? Did you see the video that's going around the internet? Because there is a video that's going on uh, that was taken during the 17th annual South Florida Tattoo Expo, which was held in Coral Springs, Florida last weekend. And there's a video. And there was a woman who, practically naked, except for a couple pieces of tape across her nipples, uh, laid on the bench and in front of everybody had her anal tattoo done. And the 22-year-old said it felt, quote, really, really good, unquote. I find that hard to believe. However, an observer noted that the whole anus tattooing thing seemed pretty, quote, cool. And another one said, quote, it's kind of a neat thing to do, unquote. So what did she have tattooed there? Apparently some young gentleman's name. And so if you want to know what the newest thing is in tattoos, there you go. Public display. Again, it's not, you know, it's not on a pornography site. It's right out there for everybody to see, to view, and to be imprinted with. Now, so you guys don't feel left out, um, there are now male enhancing body garments that are quote unquote hitting the mainstream. These are called junk jeans, among other things, all kinds of body shaper products. Some of them, I'm going to let you go to the site. But it says it's, quote, 14 ways to jazz up your junk. Now remember what I told you. First of all, we have breasts that are now called boobs. And a boob is somebody that's really stupid. So we have women and men addressing the female body parts as uh, boobs. And of course, what's happening to breast cancer? Breast cancer is increasing, it's on the rise, and will most likely continue to be on the rise as long as we treat our body parts like that. And what is the newest treatment for women? It is to have your breast removed. In fact, I talked to one woman who had a small spot of cancer found, and she said, if I was younger, I would just have all my breasts removed. It's so much easier. And that's leading us more toward an androgynous society. Well, if we're going to start referring to the male genitalia as junk, guess what's going to happen? Pretty soon, guys, hey, be prepared to have your scrotum smashed and squished, just like women do in um, having their breasts for their uh, supposedly annual mammograms, because once you start referring to your own genitalia as junk, that's what's going to happen, and there's going to be more of an issue. And what are we heading for? Not only an androgynous society, but we are also headed toward artificial wombs because the reproduction ability of males is 
lessening here, especially through to a lot of drug use, legal and illegal, including, yes, marijuana that many of you are pushing for all over the internet. That's wonderful because you are pushing for your own demise and you are heading us all toward um, such things as artificial wombs because it is known to decrease sperm count and to, um, I can't think of the word, um, it denigrates them, it takes down the quality of the sperm. So, not what you want to do to yourself. So if you are have an issue, it's just like any other medicine, think about it as medicine, it's not for, for recreational use. Nothing is. Everything should have a point and a purpose and you don't just do it just because you can. And sunny side up cholesterol rich egg yolks can stiffen your arteries almost as much as smoking. Well, it's very interesting what they do to eggs because they're still telling us that egg whites remain an excellent source of protein, a great alternative to the whole egg. No. A whole egg was designed to be eaten whole because you need the yolk to, to use, utilize the egg white, you need the white to utilize the egg yolk. The egg yolks are full of iron. Together they make an excellent protein. And what does an egg symbolize? An egg symbolizes new beginnings and new ideas, all kinds of things that they want you pulling apart, compartmentalizing, and not doing for yourself. So all kinds of news going on, and I want to take just a minute here before I finish up to tell you again and to remind you that we do have limited seating capacity at our upcoming 10th Annual Expansions Conference, which is going to be an amazing, amazing event, better than anyone can ever imagine, and they usually are. Each one gets better. I love them. I enjoy going because there's so much fabulous information. This one is titled Pyramids, Storehouses of Knowledge, and we are going to be talking to you about what pyramids mean in hyperspace, why they really exist, and discussing with you who built them. And to that extent, we are going to have a fabulous author, Dr. Samir Osmanagic from Bosnia, who wrote this wonderful book, Pyramids Around the World. And he is, his presentation will absolutely floor you his findings and what's going on in Bosnia right now. Just absolutely stunning. We will also be having a free public event with Dr. Osmanagic after the conference. And we are going to be having music by the lovely Deborah Wyndham, who is becoming globally renowned for her fabulous piano music, which she does, brings in via oversoul level. And to watch her play and to watch her hands move is like no other experience. It it's, uh, puts me practically in a trance and it's very otherworldly. So if you can't make it, please do get her CD. Uh, she has her website. Uh, listed at uh, www.debrawindham.com or if you have an event that you would like to bring her in for she does travel quite extensively you can also contact her through her site for this as well she will be playing for us at Dr. Osmanikic's event and also we will be premiering the final version of the movie Montauk Chronicles and you were going to be lucky enough to have Deborah also help us out with a little pre-concert music. So it's absolutely amazing. I do hope you will join us. There are limited seats available. This is a one in a lifetime experience. People are already signing up from all over the world and we are having presenters from all over the world. This is a world-class event. You must, must, must come if you have any interest at all in pyramids, in the paranormal, and in knowing what's really going on in your world. Okay, with that said, Speaking of paranormal, I just want to finish up with a little bit more news for you that I think that, again, you are going to find fascinating the more that you follow. We were be telling you the last few times about mermaids. Mermaids are not going away either. There is a plastic surgery center in Venezuela who is using the Little Mermaid Disney character, of course, in their, um, in their ads. Now, it's interesting because here we have Disney popping up again. You cannot just use their logos and their material without permission or risk being sued. So with that in mind, this has to be behind the scenes, has to have been approved at somewhere along the way. So what did they do with the Little Mermaid? Well, it says they got quote, she got quote unquote a boob job, which 
that's the article. Can't help it. That's what it said. And a widened pout. Okay, they're giving you big fat lips now. Um, somehow the doctors in Venezuela also managed to sculpt a pair of sexy human legs outfitted with stilettos out of her mermaid tail. It's so magical, it says. And remember, magic is a word I told you that they want in the forefront. And of course, they have the mermaid tail and the legs, but they're telling you how things are blended together, human and merfolk. So there is a reason for this, and then a reason why they make a big deal out of it once it's actually been done. Because I don't read Venezuelan news, but I do read U.S. news. So how did Venezuela, this ad, get way up here in the U.S.? Because there's certain things they want all of us to know. Also, that movie Paranorman, which I told you about when I saw the trailer probably close to a year ago, that is now out, of course, imprint people with uh, the supernatural as normal, which as I tell you, if you've read my articles, para means beyond and normal, normal. Paranormal really is normal, it's just they're making you think it's not normal. And we have the 2012 Olympics. We're going to get every little bit out of them that we possibly can. Now we have pictures on the internet of athletes and their celebrity doppelgangers. Now how many of you even know what a doppelganger is? Well, if you've attended our seminars, you know, but a lot of people don't know what a doppelganger is, and they want you to know what a doppelganger is. It is usually, for instance, if I sit in this chair and then I move, you will still see the imprint of me sitting in this chair. That has happened many times to people in this household, believe it or not, and I have seen it happen many times. Um, for, and I had mentioned this to you can tell even tell you how long ago, a year or two ago, probably well, maybe almost three, where somebody that I knew that was supposed to be leaving their home at a certain time, I walked by their house and I saw them still there from a distance and they went back into their house. Called them later and I said, you know, what do you there was no answer and so I emailed to find out when they'd actually left. I described their clothing, I told them everything that they were wearing and what they were doing. And yes, this is what that person was wearing at that particular or at the time when, when um, this person left the house. So doppelgangers do exist. They want you now to know that they exist. And again, I'm going to take you back to New World Religion and all that imprinting that's going to be um, where the normal, the paranormal, will become your new normal. So expansions.com, we tell it to you first. Now before I conclude, a couple things I want to say to those of you who write into the YouTube. Now, Stuart and I do have our website, www.expansions.com. This is where we answer the majority of the questions, about 99%. So every once in a while, um, we do read the comments that come through the YouTube, but every once in a while we answer you there, but primarily on our website. So if you have questions and you value our time and you value the answer that you get, you will sign up for a membership for $23 per month. You can ask us all the questions that you want that uh, apply to the general readership. If you have specific questions that apply to you, you do need a personal consultation, which we can do over the phone or via email, which means you write all your questions down and you send them in to us and then we answer those back and send it back to you via email. We always, always, always do our best to take care of you in the way that you need to be taken care of. And we ask in return you do the same for us. We give a lot of free information out there because we want to get you started. We want you to understand yourself and what's going on in your world. And if you like the information that we put out, then we do ask you to financially support us in the way that you can. Our membership start as low as $8 per month with, with an amazing amount of information. You get two affirmations every day on a specific topic. You get access to our blogs, which again, we read this month. We're talking about family matters. We have talked about pale pink compassion. We have talked about truth and trust. We have talked about so many things and the people who are doing the blogs it's like a classroom with us and we, whatever you give, you get back and we help each and every person who is on our membership side. So please support Stuart and I in the work that we're doing so that we can continue to give you the best research that we possibly can. 
and we appreciate those of you who are giving us your financial support. If you're not in a position, then use the free information because we expect you to get into that position. God mind is infinitely limitless and that means there is enough of everything for everyone, including you. So do your part. You can whine and complain, then you're probably not ready for our material. If you're done whining and complaining and you really want to make a change in your life, then hey, come on board. So the real work we do at the seminars, the webinars, behind the scenes on our membership side, what Stuart and I give you publicly is the tip of the iceberg because for a lot of people, even that is too much. So if you recognize yourself, think about where you are, what you want to do, and how you want to progress in your life. Stuart and I have done amazing work on ourselves. We've been together 17 years, over 17 years now. And we worked before, we work now, and we continue to progress. And I expect 17 years from now, we will still be progressing. We're not perfect, never have been. And there's a good chance down here in this earth plane, never will be. But we are trying our best to be the best people that we can. And I tell you repeatedly, we are real people, we have real issues, and those real issues push us to get real solutions, which in turn we share with you. So you can throw your stones all you want, or you can accept what the information that we have to offer. That's up to you. If you don't like us, turn us off, go somewhere else. If you do like us, we ask that you support us by doing your work and getting a membership on the membership side. We have just beginning getting ready to post a fantastic a new uh, webinar called Creating Your Ideal Weight and that has to do with what's in your mind more than what goes into your mouth. So you're going to want to watch for that and on the gold membership side we are getting ready to post the uh, money webinar that we just finished up, Removing Your Financial Blocks. People who went through these two webinars had absolutely amazing success. So that will be posted on the homepage, www.expansions.com. You have one information, you want more, you have questions, www.expansions.com. Go to the website. You're welcome to post on YouTube. If you're asking questions, you're probably not going to get much of an answer, if any. Okay, we're happy to share, but again, this takes our time, our energy, our finances, our resources. We ask that you please give back. Thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to visiting with you again very soon. And regardless of what you do, I appreciate the fact that you watch us, you listen, and most importantly, you keep an open mind and you learn how to think for yourself. Bye-bye.